All right, good morning. We'll go, we'll go ahead and get started. Hey, glad to have you here on a holiday weekend. The, these are the truly faithful people that are here on a holiday weekend. You, you will be doubly blessed, I'm sure. All right, let's, let's open it up with, uh, with this scripture from 1 Chronicles 29. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and in your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. And now we thank you, our God, and praise your glorious name. Well, good morning. morning. We are still, uh, this is probably the last week I'll put this up here for a while, but we have those backpacks that were donated. We have 45 of them that we're going to fill and give to the school. So if you're, as you're out in Walmart or the different stores, as you see stuff going on sale, grab those in advance, and then we'll put those together before school gets here and be able to bless the school and the people in our community with uh, some school supplies. So Probably by the songs that we did this morning, you probably kind of got an idea of what we might be talking about today. Anybody want to take a guess? Nope. No. Just kidding, yeah. <laughs> Just want to throw, try to throw you off a little bit. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're continuing our series on the gifts of the Spirit. And yeah, today is the gift of miracles. Tim, you got it right. You win um, a donut. <laughs> yeah. So we're, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is where we're going to pick up as the section that we've been in, just going kind of verse by verse through here. Uh, verse 7 says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. And again, that word given, these spiritual gifts that are given, that word means a manifestation or an expression. So this is the Holy Spirit inside of us who is expressing his power through us. So this is given to us, and why are they given to us? What's it say right here? Yeah, to help each other. That's awesome. You guys can read. That's wonderful. The word that's used there is the same word that we get our word symphony from. So all of these gifts, the diversity of gifts that's given to all of us is to help us come together in a beautiful symphony. Each part sounds good together. It is harmonious, and it is a beautiful song to the Lord. Verse 8, to one person the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. Uh, to another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. And we took looked at those a few weeks ago, word of wisdom, and that is God giving us a small portion of his wisdom to give us direction and a word of knowledge, and that's God giving a small portion of his knowledge to give us information. Verse 9, the same Spirit gives great faith to another. We looked at, the, at faith a couple of weeks ago, and we saw there's three types of faith. Saving faith, and that's the faith that we need to be saved. Then there's sanctifying faith, that's daily faith that we need every day to help us be more like Jesus. And then there's supernatural faith that God gives us at a specific time for a specific reason, where we just believe and know that God is going to act supernaturally. The verse goes on and says, To someone else, the one spirit gives the gift of healing. And we talked about healing last week, and we saw that God is the one who heals. We don't understand why some get healed and some don't get healed. We saw that we're supposed to pray for healing until God tells us to stop. And then the biggest one that we looked at last week is sometimes we have to be willing to look like a failure. If when we pray for somebody to be healed, God doesn't heal them. And then we saw lastly that my job is to pray and it's God's, job's, it's God's job to heal. So before we jump into this week's topic, though, I was reading this week, and this will go along with healing that we talked about last week. I was reading in my devotions, I read Matthew 4 and Luke 4. And those two chapters are interesting because both passages talk about multitudes coming to Jesus Multitude meaning a great number of people. We don't know if it's hundreds or thousands or how many people it was. It's just a whole bunch. And they came to Jesus, and the verses in those two chapters say that Jesus healed every single one of them who were sick and ill. And they all brought all of them who were sick, and Jesus healed them 
all. And it made me stop and think about a question that was asked last week. How did Jesus, and this isn't the question, this is a question leading up to the question. So I'm setting you up for the question, okay? With the question. How did Jesus have time to heal hundreds or even thousands of people if they had to get in a line and Jesus healed each one of them individually? I mean, was there like a, you go up to the deli counter and you pull a number? A toll booth? Yeah, I don't think that Jesus would have had time to do that. And that led me to think about the question that was asked last week about uh, different things that we see today where there are mass healings, where we pray over a large group of people and see God heal different things. And I thought, man, and the Bible doesn't say this. This is my opinion, okay? We clear on that. This is my opinion. This and $12 will get you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. But I think Jesus did, this was kind of the first mass healings where Jesus just healed a lot of people all at once. To be able to heal hundreds and even thousands in a single day, there's no way that, and I mean, he's God, he can do whatever he wants, obviously, and I'm not going to put him into a box, but I think this was the first ones of those. So first are these group healings, but um, that's my opinion. Verse 10, we'll go on. He gives one person the power to perform miracles. Miracles, that's an interesting thing. The word perform there means a working, and the word miracle means a miraculous power. So literally, this verse says that to some people, there is a gift given for the workings of power. Hmm. These, are work, these workings refer to the God-given ability to demonstrate the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit and work inside of us. Each miracle is a working, a specific, definitive manifestation of this gift. And we're going to talk about that. So what is a miracle? I mean, if we're going to talk about people being able to do miracles or miracles happening, we got to understand what is a miracle. So the word miracle has been used for everything. Everything from finding a front parking spot at Walmart to somebody miraculously coming out of the clutches of death back to being healed. We use miracle for everything. Oh, well, that was a miracle. <laughs> that's a miracle. This is a miracle. That's a miracle. And we hear that word used so much. But when you hear the word miracle and you think about a miracle happening, what do you think of? For me, I think about when I was a little boy, and I've told this story many times about how when I was four years old, I was pushing my little big wheel cart thing around that I would ride on as a little kid, you know, one of those little toys around my grandfather's pond. And uh, he had a five acre farm there and had this acre plus pond, and it's up on a hill so nobody could see it from the house. And you had to go down a hill and cross the creek by the chicken barns and up the hill and see this to get to where the pond is by the fields that uh, my grandfather would farm. And I, uh, I know this farm well they have they had it all through my from the time I, they bought it the year I was born and they lived on it until my grandfather passed away in 2013 um, so I was there quite a bit spent a lot of time at that place swimming in that pond even as a teenage boy and and I'll I when I think about healing I think about pushing that little big wheel and I don't remember it because I was so young into that pond and my uncle was mowing down the hill by the creek and he came up the hill and saw me floating face down in that pond with the water completely calm and me as a little boy, Joe's age, Joe's size, out in the middle of that pond, just completely still, completely calm. And by some chance, he went up the hill, and by some chance, he looked, and by some chance, he saw me, which I don't believe any of those things happened by chance. And my uncle whistled extremely loud so that everybody could hear it over the mowers and everything, and he dove in and just finished his CPR training and pulled me out and began to work on me and pronounced me dead. And my grandfather saw a muscle spasm in my leg or a twitch or something and pulled my uncle off of me and began to work on me again. And their best guess are 10 to 15 minutes, I was dead. And I mean, you don't come back from that, not without some problems or anything. <laughs> but I used to think, oh man, my grandfather just, he brought me back. And you know, after God healed me a couple of years ago, I look at that story very differently now, and I believe that God brought me back through a miracle. 
I think about my sister who, uh, when she was a little, I mean, she was just little. I mean, I think she was about two years old, got very ill and so when we were in northern Kentucky. And my parents kept taking her to the doctor and they kept telling her, you know, it's a fever, she'll be okay. And after uh, several weeks of her getting worse and worse and worse, finally getting to a doctor at Children's Hospital that said, she has spinal meningitis. And um, nearly lost her, and she's completely normal and about to have her second baby. Did she have it yet? I don't think so. She's about to have a baby any day, her number two. I think about things like that, or even things that aren't about death. I think about, you know, when we all left Open Door. I think about how, you know, I had no way to provide for my family. I, there was nothing in how God provided miraculously doubling what I would have earned working there for my family to be able to give us a good Christmas and to be able to take care of the needs that we had and how God used many people I'd never even met, never, I, never met them to provide for us. And I think that's a miracle. When I think about a miracle, I think about something big like that where God just steps in and does something. And I read this definition. It's from a man named Max Turner, who's a professor of, New Test of the New Testament at London Bible College. And he, he defined a miracle as something that uh, combines these traits. One, it's an extraordinary, it is an extraordinary or startling observable event. So it's definitely an event, but it's something that you can see, and it's beyond what we can do. D two, it can't be reasonably explained in terms of humans' abilities or other known forces in the world. Three, it's perceived as a direct act of God. And four, it is usually understood as having a symbolic or sign value, pointing people to God as redeemer or judge. That's a pretty good definition of a miracle. Something that's beyond us. Can't be explained. But just like the gift of healing that we talked about last week, it operates under God's control. No one can simply work a miracle by the exercise of their own will, just like healing, like we talked about last week. And the major misconception, you remember how we talked about how I grew up and many of you did to where, well, those fake healers, if they could really heal people, if people could really be healed when they pray for them, then why don't they go to Children's Mercy Hospital and empty the place out? Well, that's a very immature, very unlearned way of explaining what that is. It's, it's a way of saying that if it happened once, you have control over it at all times. And remember, it's not about us. It's the Holy Spirit inside of us. It's the Holy Spirit who is doing it through us. And we have no power. It's not an on-demand gift. It's who the Holy Spirit chooses. And we've got to, again, be willing to look like a fool and a failure because when we pray over people, God doesn't always choose to heal everybody. And it's my job just to pray and God's job to heal. And that's the same kind of a thing. It's not a once I have it, it's a always have it. It's what does God want to do? Because it's all under his control. I mean, there's miracles all through the Bible. I was thinking about the New Testament miracles. And when Jesus first started his ministry, how he, his very first miracle, what was his very first miracle? Water to wine. That'll fry some Baptist brains. Yeah, Jesus walking up saying, hey, fill these six big water pots at a wedding with water, and all of a sudden it's going to turn to wine. And I always grew up being taught, well, that's the fruit of the vine, that's grape juice. These people were drinking alcohol and were intoxicated, and the head of the, uh, the, the, the guy who leads the, the marriage thing comes up and says, you saved the good stuff till the end. He wasn't talking about Welch's. Okay. So that, that, that kind of messed with you. But that was Jesus' very first miracle. And then feeding 5,000 men, not including women and children, off of five loaves and two fish with 12 basketfuls left over. I mean, what a miracle for Jesus to pray over something and bless it and then just start pulling off pieces and it just never got smaller. Can you imagine? Can you imagine sitting there and watching that or the 4,000 later, uh, how Jesus fed them? I mean, there's the, the uh, raising people from the dead. E even Paul, when he preached till the middle of the night, remember the guy who fell out of the roof and died? That's a bad sermon. <laughs> you literally kill somebody? 
I mean, <laughs> that's pretty bad. But he was brought back. He was raised. I mean, there's so many. We could spend all day talking about the miracles just in the New Testament. Uh, but the purpose of the miracles was always to prove who God is and to prove his power. Think about the Old Testament miracles. I mean, there's so many miracles in the Old Testament. The one song we sang even had some of them in there. But I was thinking about the miracles in Egypt just to prove that God was the one true God. Or Elijah standing up on top of Mount Carmel with, these two, with this a big altar with the, meat, or the, food, the, the, the ox slate on it. And there's two of them and the prophets of Baal are dancing around screaming and yelling and trying to get fire to consume their sacrifice. And Elijah just stops and prays a simple little prayer. And can you imagine standing there and watching literal fire fall out of heaven and just eat it all up? And when the fire, when the smoke clears, there's no stones, there's no meat, there's no wood, there's no nothing. There's just like a gaping hole. I mean, people today would be like, well, a meteor must have fallen and just, I mean, try to explain it away that way. But can you imagine seeing that? There are so many miracles in the Old Testament. What's your favorite miracle in, in the Bible? It's okay, you can talk. Anybody have a favorite one? Lazarus. Lazarus, yeah. yeah. Being raised from the dead. Can you, I always thought it was funny that Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, and not just come forth. Because I think if he'd have said, come forth, everybody would have got up and walked out of graves. <laughs> can you imagine that? Talk about the walking dead. Anybody else got a favorite one, Bill? Well, I got two. Yeah? I like the, uh, when, you know, the Lord parted the Red Sea for the Israelites to go across. Yeah. And then uh, Joshua, when uh, he was fighting, and he caused the sun to stand still, you know. That was, I really like that. That's a cool one, too. Yeah, the sun standing still. Yeah. Anybody else got a favorite one? It's like a Marvel movie, isn't it? I mean, can you imagine, or, or even like Samson, can you imagine, that would be like a superhero movie today, you know? I always thought it was a miracle with a, or a miracle, there I used it as a, a slang term again. I thought a cool story when the nation of Israel marched around Jericho all those times, the miracle was them all being quiet, walking around the city for that many times, and then shouting and the walls just fell down because they yelled. I mean... I always thought that was a cool one. Anybody else? A miracle of one of your favorites? Daniel in the furnace. Yeah. Yeah, the, all the, the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, that whole story through there. The fiery furnace, and then, and then even in the, uh, um, the lion's den. Those are, I mean, think about the whole Bible is full of miracles everywhere. You look like you're about to say something. I just, <laughs> I just remember a good one in, in the Old Testament. I can't remember who who it was, but the all of Israel lined up for to battle the Philistines, and um, and everybody ran except for one person. Do, do you remember this this one? And the Holy Spirit came on him. I get I, the Spirit came on him, and he he fought that entire army by himself. With one one guy, one sword. Oh yeah, in the in the um, the lintel patch. Yeah. Well, that, that was Shamgar. She that just mentioned that one. No, I'm not talking about that one. About that. This one, they could not even pry the sword out of the oh, glass. Oh, yeah, yeah, Remember yeah. that? That was a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. How he filled the, the crews of oil, never ran out, and she was able to fill all of them so be able to survive. Yeah, there's so many miracles in the Bible. I mean, just, just about every chapter you read through and there's something miraculous that happens. I mean, it's just, it's so cool. So why is it so weird for us to talk about miracles today when we read a book, we're supposed to read a book every day, that is full of miracles? Just the book itself is, is a miracle. As many authors and over such a the time period 
and there not being any contradiction in there, which we'll talk about in just a minute. I mean, it's a miraculous book. We have a miraculous God. We have a miraculous faith. So is it okay for me to ask and pray for a miracle? Is that all right? I think that's the next slide. Nope. Oh, we've skipped that one. That was while Tim was running it for you, hon. It's the next one after that. There you go. Is it okay to ask for a miracle? I mean, is it okay to pray for one? Is it okay to, to literally ask God, God, I need a miracle here? Well, the way I grew up, even from a very young age, I was taught that, yes, God does miracles. Yeah, we believe that. We believe that God did do miraculous things at time, but those miracles that happen today, that was for the big name preachers to make their illustrations and stories work. You know, yeah, God can do it. And he might do something over on the mission field. Might hear about some miracle in Africa or something like that. But I never thought I could ever see or would ever see a miracle in my lifetime or that I would ever see it with my own eyes. In fact, I remember growing up hearing people say and quote Jesus in Matthew 12, where Jesus said this. But Jesus said, only an evil, adulterous generation would demand a miraculous sign. And he said the same thing in Matthew 16, 4, just a couple of chapters later. 1 Corinthians 12 says this. It is, it is foolish to the Jews who ask for a sign for he from heaven. You're wicked and evil if you're looking for a sign. You're foolish if you're seeking for a sign. And I heard those things said over and over again growing up. And I, I, I always thought, well, man, then I shouldn't be asking God. I should just have enough faith to trust him. But then when I actually started studying the Bible for myself, one of the rules of Bible study is to ask, who's this talking to? And what are they talking about? And Jesus was talking to the scribes and Pharisees who were looking for Jesus to do a miracle. They were asking him for a miracle, knowing Jesus wouldn't do it in their minds, so it would justify why they didn't put their faith and follow him. That's why Jesus said, you bunch of wicked, evil people trying to get me to do a miracle. He knew exactly what they were trying to do and exactly what they were thinking. It's very different for us today. When we pray for something and we ask God for a miracle out of a heart of compassion, especially when we're praying over someone who's sick and needs healing, I think that that honors God. And I think God is pleased with that. He commanded us to do it in the book of James. I think he's very pleased with it. When we talk about the miracles, when we talk about the miraculous thing, there's, there's a verse that in God's word that always... When, even when I first started believing and studying for myself, there's a verse that has just always been like a wow kind of a verse. How can I? That's a stretch for me. That's a verse that just, man, when it comes to miraculous things, how, how is that even possible? And it's this verse right here. It's, it's one of the most thought-provoking, divisive, controversial verses, I think, in the Bible. And it's this one. I tell you the truth, this is Jesus talking. Anyone, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, so the same things that Jesus did, and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. Okay, let's talk about what were the works that Jesus did. What were some of the things Jesus did? Okay, yeah, that's pretty steep. Ruby just jumped right in the deep end, right off the bat. I mean, let's just get it out of the way. We mentioned a few of them. Jesus did some miraculous things. And Jesus said if we believe in him, we can do the same works. We, actually, it says we will do the same works and even greater works. That's pretty, that can be tough to believe. Just about everyone I know who studies their Bible and loves their Bible and and Every single one of them, there's some confusion in that verse. 
I've never met a pastor who says, oh, yeah, I know exactly what that means, and let me explain it to you. And it actually makes sense biblically and hermeneutically, and it's not just their opinion on something. Because we all have opinions. But that can be a confusing verse. So when we come to a confusing verse, we can deal with it one of three ways. We can either try to figure out how to live with a Bible that has errors in it. Do you believe that the Bible has errors in it? Okay, neither do I. Just making sure we're on the same page. So that one's out. I can try to interpret this verse according to my experiences and, and why my experiences don't measure up to that verse. That's kind of a weak way of living with it. Or I can just trust God to work out the confusion and believe the verse and ask God to do what the verse says in my life. I think that's the one I'm going to go with. I may not understand it, may not comprehend everything about it. And I'm not just talking about this verse. There's other verses in the Bible that can be hard for us to believe at times. But a lot of people try to explain this verse away. And they'll try to say it has nothing to do with the miraculous. It has, it, it's a numbers thing. Because Jesus was only one person and the church is, you know, there's hundreds of millions of people who have been saved through eternity since Jesus through the, the couple thousand years since Jesus, that it's just a numbers thing. There's going to be greater things done. There's going to be other things done. There's going to be more in number done because one person versus thousands and millions. That's one interpretation I've heard from this verse. I've also heard people say this has nothing to do with the miraculous and everything to do with evangelism. That Jesus is just talking about reaching people. Because the people that Jesus reached, he didn't reach that many compared to how many we're going to reach with all of this. Again, there's the numbers flowing in since Jesus was only one person. He was a pretty specific guy. Jesus was very specific. And all of a sudden he's supposed to be vague? That's, yeah. So it leads me to, to think... And to ask the question, why don't we see miracles today like we read about in the Bible? Is it because they aren't happening? Is it because we're not around people who believe that they can happen? Is it because we just don't look and aren't looking for them? I believe that faith is tied to this as well. Just like it was to healing that we talked about last week, we have to have faith. We pray the prayer of faith. And I believe that faith plays a big part of it. So why don't we see them? Well, let me just ask you, have you ever seen a miracle? This is the part where I'm going to let you talk for a minute. <coughs> I didn't. I didn't see it, but mm -hmm. I lived it. I had a had a coworker after work walk into a 7-Eleven. Uh, was that was being robbed? Um, they took his gun. They shot him seven times in the face. Mm. And, and well, face and of the body, and and he he survived. He he. Well, and I think that we say that technology and, and doctors did that, but there's no way. I mean, there, there's in my yeah. mind, there's no way that they could have done it without without God, and without without help. Yeah. Wow. Anybody else? Pat. I want to say, talk about my son. You know, when they got married, uh, they told me they'd only had a 5% chance of having a baby. And, you know, we prayed and prayed and prayed, and they did have two miscarriages, but now we have an 18 month old. Yeah. So that's a big miracle. That's a huge and, miracle. And of course, myself, you know, 30 some years ago, I had cancer mm -hmm. and uh, took chemo for six months, lost all my hair. And while I was at the hospital, not our church, but a, a little church that Bill family went to, his pastor came, pulled oil, pulled oil, over, my, oil over my head and prayed over me. And I, I'm a miracle today. 
15. Absolutely. Amen. It's been over 30 years. 30 years. And I'm not going to quit telling people about Jesus either because what he's done for me has changed my whole life. Yeah, I love it. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Well, we have a living miracle in our family. Yep. No one wasn't even expected to survive for needing a kidney transplant, but got him to go home on dialysis. Took the cord out before he went home from NICU because he didn't need dialysis. Then they discovered liver cancer. They he's cancer free, and hopefully we'll go on the transplant list this fall. And just finished kindergarten, so <laughs> he's a living girl. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Speaking about not being able to have children, our daughter-in-law's sister had a less than one percent chance of ever having children, and her little one just turned four years old. Wow! <laughs> less than one percent. Less than one percent. She was forty years old when she got pregnant. Which wow! Also lessens your chances. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely. Wow. Fair. That's awesome. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. These two. Told we couldn't have children, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it was <laughs> we met each other within like a week of his first birthday, mm. and uh, the whole you know, we dated, we got married at the same time, their situation was falling apart, and we decided let's get certified foster parents mm -hmm. and both sides of the, this story were just going parallel to each other instead of all of a sudden or until all of a sudden you know we just crashed into each other and now we're a family <laughs> yeah. I mean, That's a miracle. without without that they wouldn't have had a chance mm -hmm. without them we wouldn't have had the life we lived awesome i mean there's there's time he, he needs it Jade needs. chloe's just smiling Jade's like ducking his head please stop talking about me you know there's miracles that happen a lot of times we don't even see and don't even know that happen around us you know i i, I was driving on uh, i-95 going through the city of providence just a couple of years ago and a guy uh, a vehicle spun around and went, I mean, he was next to us, and then literally he, he turned and went right in front of us on, a, on an interstate and just, man, I, th I think that's a miracle, God protecting. At another time, a trailer was going, and the tire came off and went right in front of my truck I was driving, bounced off the median, and I was pulling a trailer, and it bounced between my truck and the trailer. So, I mean, missed the front, missed the back, and missed the trailer, everything, and I think, man, how many times have things happen on, on the road that we don't even know happen around us where God just said, I think I'm just going to take care of you. That little five-minute delay that made you late could be God protecting you from an accident. That's miraculous. Aren't all the spiritual gifts that are mentioned, I feel like they fall under the category of miracles. And I feel like every time I pray and ask for anything, that if it's answered, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. I feel like when my dad called us and said, we're going to church when I was nine, and we went to church, that was a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that just began several in our family. So. Yeah, it changed the lives. There's nothing yep. more miraculous than a changed life. Anybody else? Carolyn? Yeah. For a month, I caught my third, third month that I was pregnant with her. She wasn't even growing in the uterus, so they prepared me for a miscarriage because I was showing all the signs of miscarriage. And we just kept praying and praying, and she was growing where she wasn't even supposed to be growing. Like, I should have lost her, and somehow not normal and a month, a month after praying she was reattached and growing and wow. somehow she came out perfectly normal. It's it awesome. A miracle, so. It's definitely a miracle. Yeah. 
We're glad about that. Yeah. <laughs> I know somebody else that's glad about that too. <laughs> Andy, so I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago, I was talking to a pastor that had done some missionary work, and this is more of a question, I, I, I suppose. Um, and you know, we were talking about um, the gifts of the Spirit and God moving and doing things, and, and you know, he was from a, a similar background that we, you know, that we were that. Mm -hmm. Uh, that God didn't do those kind of things anymore. But as I questioned him, it's it's funny we were having coffee and he, he kind of looked around like to make sure none of his members were around. But he and he said, but he said I've changed the way I think now because I've seen some things. Is the exact words he said. And he was talking about miraculous things that were happening in foreign countries. Mm -hmm. And then and so and I asked him I said, well, why don't we see that stuff here? And he could not. He couldn't answer. But but there's workings that are miraculous going on all around the world, but not here. And I wonder why. And, and when I say not here, not that I know of, or not mm -hmm. that I see. But there were things that were being done with thousands of people. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. Let's see. Dave. I have a thought on that because one of your criteria was that. Miracles, they're for a purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, God doesn't just do them to give us a show or something mm -hmm. like that. And so I, I think that quite often they're, they're needed more in, mm -hmm. in certain areas of the world. You know, they need a miracle at that point to, for God to show them <coughs> something or to do something to, you know, to, to help the ministry or whatever. Mm -hmm. they're, they're needed more. Uh, we probably don't need them as much. Uh, here, uh, as, as they might over there, because uh, here would be a lot of people like, well, show us something, God, and and, and he's not going to do that. Yeah, he's not an on-demand. Yeah, he's not an on-demand type guy. So, yeah, he can do them here, but he's going to do them when, he, when it's according to his purpose to do them here. And he just might have a purpose more often in other parts of the world right now. So that's kind of the way I looked at that. Yeah, that's true. That's one, Yeah, definitely. I, I think, too, you know, we are so, here in America, we're spoiled and we have money. And if you think about where those are happening, most of the time it's third world countries. And so why do I need God if I can write a check? You know? I think some of it comes down to the way we grew up. And while we believe that God does miracles today, do we believe that he would do it for us? Yeah, it's the same thing we talked about last week with uh, the healings. Jesus didn't do many wonderful works in the area that he was at where he grew up because of their lack of what? And in an area where we are so intellectual, like America, you know, we, we have to be able to figure it all out. And if we can figure it out, that doesn't take faith. You know, sometimes I think it's that faith of a child. And it's funny that he, didn't he say once that he would make the lies of my fools? He did say that. Mm -hmm. but, you know, you ask anybody here, and I've been, like, I'm wrestling with this. Mm -hmm. I'm learning it. Sort of. You know, you ask anybody here, is there any reason why God would not do a miracle for you? Every one of us would say no. But if someone were to ask for a volunteer to step up and call for a miracle, who would be the first one to step up? That's when, kind of like what we talked about last go week. Time, yeah. There's a lot of hesitation in us. And I there is. That is a big yeah, it's like what we talked about last week with, with healings, that we've got to be willing to look like a fool. What if God doesn't do it? And that's our first thought is, well, what if it doesn't happen? I'm going to look like an idiot. What if God does? Yeah. Then what? Yeah. Instead of looking at the negative, well, what if God doesn't do it? I'm going to look stupid. Well, we gotta, what if God does it? You know? That's where faith, that's the difference between faith, having faith and not having faith. 
Yeah. Maybe we have so many resources here, and we have five. We have the scriptures available in every single kind of translation or whatever and a lot of those countries don't mm -hmm. and so you know we always think well what about you know how is god going to reach that reach that one person that's out there that nobody knows about you know i'm trying to make it like god doesn't have and of course it's through creation and all that but i've seen use of miracles for that definitely anybody else yeah bill uh, a couple of years ago i was uh routine doctor's Carcinoma cancer, uh -huh. obviously, like because it was red, and also I had this mole on my back that I had since I was a child, and it started looking a little funky. My doctor said, I don't think that's a big deal. We're gonna have to hold them taken off from this guy. Well, a couple a week later, this doctor called me, the, the plastic surgeon called me, and just out of the blue, and it's, uh, he called me because he couldn't be at my appointment today, that, that, that day, and he said, uh, well, the, the, the bowl's up. Uh, uh, no one can Stage two. We're talking biopsies. They took a football sized chunk out of my back where it was. Mm -hmm. Found out where it drained and checked that. I'm waiting all these results. Going to a church with a pad that was pastor. He anoints me at the altar. In the next week, and uh, the surgeon and the that uh, did the biopsies and the plastic surgery worked together. I both served the same time. They flipped the back, flipped the over, they flipped the legs up, and uh, I passed her some time to put me calling up with the doctor. They said, What's your favorite verse? And I said, Well, Philippians 4.13. Andy and I finished praying in the parking lot, wherever he was, and I went into uh, the doctor's office at Shawnee Mission Hospital, and I sat down just outside the waiting room. Uh, and as I looked up in this different section of the waiting room on the wall, looking at the mm -hmm. I went to both doctors that week. Nothing spread. Uh, the third time I was seen with the cancer. I think that's a miracle. And yeah. uh, it's kind of an anniversary day and all the cool. Yeah, that was right after God healed me. Yeah. I remember that. I've been in that building multiple times since with my iron infusions and I've seen that written there and I've I've thought about that several times. I wonder if this is the spot Bill was standing. That's neat. Anybody else? Yes. Um, well, I've, I've had a couple uh, with my brother, my dad. They both weren't supposed to be here. You know, my brother's now 47, about to be 47. He's still here. My dad is still here. But for me personally, I was pregnant with twins with Janisha, and I miscarried one. And mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going on, and I immediately just started crying. And then by the time I got to the emergency, I think we've all seen, I mean, it sounds like we've all seen miracles 
And I think we probably have seen more than that. We just think, oh, well, that was just, oh, thank the Lord I'm okay. That's just good luck. You know, we chalk it up to good luck or, or dodging a bullet. Coincidence. Coincidence. You know, and if we're being real, you know, how many of those things was God actually stepping in and intervening on our behalf? You know, we, today we can, you know, blame a healing on a doctor. But they didn't have doctors like that in Bible days. So it just says they were healed. I wonder how many times the doctors had absolutely nothing to do with us getting better and had everything to do with God. But we think modern medicine. And God did give wisdom to people to develop those things. And, and that's a miracle, too, from God. But how many times has it really been God's just, and I wonder if he sits up there and says, man, they missed that one. <laughs> so let's keep our eyes open this week, and let's, let's look at the miracles around us. You know, some of us being married for 20 years is a miracle. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> it's a miracle for her. Yeah. To have still be married to me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> why, is that, why is that puzzling? That should be self evident. <laughs> I don't see this abuse. I can get this at home. <laughs> well, he can give it, but he can't take oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, it's, it's funny that you mentioned. Like um, the faith aspect of it in trying to explain miracles away and everything. And when you mentioned that the first time this morning, my mind immediately went to all of the Jews that had just walked across the Red Sea that then built a golden calf. Like, what did you all think when that happened? You're gonna pray to Baal? Seriously? Yeah, they. I mean, they were. And the same thing happened. But we do the same thing. <laughs> What's that? And the same exact thing happened four hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They. Israel had a very short memory. But we do too. Yeah. You know, we have a very short memory of what God has done for us, and then we run off away from Him and. We can't be too hard on them because we're just as guilty. Yeah. Who's wrapping us up today? Bill is? All right. 30 for you now. <laughs> uh, uh, that was great today. Follow up from last week, right? And uh, appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, I was thinking, though, about another story, too. And how many of you ever felt like you cheated death? You know? Uh, that God spared you, you know, I know some, like my wife, I feel like God cheated death, I mean, she cheated death with her cancer and stuff, and some of you probably have too, uh, Bill, and you, of course, you know, he's probably dead for 15 minutes, you know, and so uh, I was just thinking, I, I've gone through two uh, car accidents, well, one car accident once, and uh, then a motorcycle accident, and uh, when I was in my early 40s, I was coming home from work one time, and uh, this lady, she runs into this other lady, and I'm going by on K32, and she causes that car to hit me right in the wheel of my truck. And so I spin around, lose control, end up on the guardrail, going down towards the river. But right as I was getting ready to hit the guardrail, a big old Delta 88 T-bones me in the side. And... Of course, whenever an accident happens, everything just goes into slow motion, if you've never experienced that. And so uh, I get out, and I remember just talking to the Lord. Uh, Lord, i got little kids. I'm not really ready to go home yet. And uh, the Lord spared me through that. And then uh, four years ago, I was on my motorcycle, and Andy had just come to open door not very long. And uh, a Sunday afternoon, I was riding with a buddy up on 45 highway and a deer jumps in front of me five feet to where I can do nothing you know 
And so I just, I see this deer, I see her eyes, and I see her, I'm going to hit her, you know, nothing I can do. I'm going 55 miles an hour, maybe 60. And, you know, I'm carrying her on my handlebars in the front of the bike for a little while, and then all of a sudden, I'm sliding down the highway, uh, two-lane highway at 60 miles an hour, you know. And the guy riding beside me says, man, you were sliding as fast as I was going, you know. Well, Right before that, I was talking to the Lord, as often I do on my motorcycle, and I said, Lord, you know, uh, my mom was dying of cancer at the time, and uh, she was 89, and I said, Lord, uh, I just wish you'd have the rapture take place so mom don't have to die, and we could just all go to heaven with her. And it wasn't like a couple minutes later this accident happens, and so as I'm sliding down the road, I'm saying, God, I didn't really want to go home right now, you know? <laughs> And everything just goes into complete slow motion. I mean, things that happen in seconds, it just like it, it takes minutes, you know. And I don't know if we've got guardian angels watching over us. That's a mystery, too. But uh, I think I've used up a lot of mine. And I, I just appreciate the way that God watches over me. And that day, he, he spared me. I slid down the road a little ways. I had my leather jacket on, luckily. And... Uh, the guy with me, he was wearing shorts. That's why I didn't have chaps on that day because I didn't want to be a sissy, you know. It's like 55 degrees. and uh, So anyway, the Lord spared me. And I'm just, you know, he, he spared me both of those times for a purpose, you know. And, you know, just serving him and living for him. And uh, like, like Andy said, this week, just try to be aware of the little things that God does in your life. And he's doing those around you to open up your eyes to see how he's working in your lives. And so we all need to be aware of that. And I'm still here and still riding and uh, got another motorcycle and still going on. And, you know, so. All right, let's pray. Father, just thank you for everyone that could come today. Thank you for those that are gone. I just pray that you'll bring them back safely with us, Lord. And uh, bless their day, too, with their families or whatever they're doing. Just thank you for our church, Lord. Help us, Lord, to grow in our faith for you. You've put us all here for a reason, Lord. And uh, it's your timing, Lord. And I, I see the way that you're working in every one of our lives. And you're growing us. Even though our church might not be growing in numbers, Lord, we are growing spiritually. And I just thank you for that. Just pray that you'll continue to do that work in us, Lord, and that we will make disciples and build our church up because we share our testimony with others and witness to people, and they want to come to church and learn about you too. And I just help us to do that, Lord. Help us to be aware of you using us every day in our lives and draw closer to you. Bless our week this week, Lord, and keep us all safe and bless our families. And ask these things, Father, in Jesus' name, amen.